Okay. This is exciting. And Kenny's favorite show often says they have a fever and they only cure. It's more football. David Music. All right, David, we now to, Rico, this is a treat. The Lions have a wild selection in here. It is also 17 quarterbacks in the first 18 picks. This is the Kuiper hairspray mock. Let's go through it. You're right about the quarterback. So let's just start with the man. Uh, Chicago takes Caleb Williams. Washington takes Jaden Daniels. New England takes Drake May. I'll just skip along. I'll get to all the quarterbacks here, okay? Uh, Let's go to number 11. The Vikings take J.J. McCarthy. And at 12, the Denver Broncos select Bo Nix. How offended is Rico Beard that five quarterbacks are off the board before your godson, Michael Penix? Very, very offended. But I understand the injury thing, so I'm not going to sit here and get mad. Teams are taking a look and making sure that he's going to be healthy. But you said J.J. at what pick? 11 to the Vikings. How offended is, are you, Mike, Mm. that your team said, we don't need a quarterback. Daniel Jones is our guy. Yeah, I've pretty much given up on life. So (laughs) I don't have the ability to be offended. I've given up on my team. See, because from everything that I'm hearing, somebody's going to move up to get J.J. And I think it's a consensus that – he, he's a first-round QB, but, man, you're going to pay a lot to get him. It's desperation. Look, even John Jansen, who's the ultimate Michigan homer, admits J.J.'s not a top-ten pick. But it's never about that. If you don't have a quarterback, you have to do dirty things to get one. That's it. I just think it's hilarious. Bo Nix at 12. Penix is gone with the wind. And I know what you're trying to get the Giants to do. We're not doing that today. David, continue Trade with the up. interesting selections, please. Yeah, so at four and five and six, we have wide receivers. We have Marvin Harrison Jr. at four, Malik Neighbors at five, and Rome Adunze at six. There you go. For the Giants. You get my gods. I don't care. Next. <laughs> Keep going down the line, please. Who did the Vikings got? They got JJ. They had Who did JJ, the Packers take? The Packers. Who, who did the Bears take at nine? Let's get some sizzle. Uh, the Vikings at 23. Remember, they have two picks. They have Cooper DeGene. The Packers select at 25. Leotu Latu. Oh, uh, from UCLA. Mm-hmm. Who'd the Bears take with nine? Uh, the Bears at nine took Jarrett Verse. All right, so Bears pass rusher to go with Montez Sweat. I couldn't argue it. Probably Dallas Turner viewed as the better player. I like He's Jared taken Verse. above him, yes. The Vikings take a corner because I think that's what they do every year. There's something in that franchise. The Packers one is super interesting because he may end up being the best pass rusher in the draft. He was unblockable in college. And look, the Packers, they took Van Ness last year. They're loading up. You're going to have to get to the quarterback in this division with Caleb and with Goff and with, let's say it's J.J. If you don't have a pass rush, you're going to get eaten alive. And I think with the Bears and the Vikings, if you do take rookie quarterbacks – I think the bar is low that first year, so you can really solidify yourself as one of the top two teams in this division. What I I don't understand with this mock draft is that at 10, the Jets take tight end Brock Bowers. Now, at this point in the mock draft, there had only been one offensive tackle selected. So you can still have the pick of the litter here, and they go with tight end at number 10. Yeah, but, but, but again, David, it's about weapons. Look, Brock Bowers for a long time was supposed to go in the top eight. I don't know what has happened. I don't know if it's prospect fatigue. I don't know if it's the injury. No, Mike, I think it's simply just the quarterbacks because if you're ranked, if you're that high, you need a quarterback. All right. And the receivers, people seem to think that they are so special that they are the next tier. Okay. Then you end up with Brock Bowers, the most special college tight end I've seen in 10 years. Right. But now you have teams that all of a sudden are saying, wait, we can get the best defensive players. At pick eight and nine? Wait, we've seen tight ends go in the top ten. How many? Like, No, no, we have, How Mike. is Bowers not getting that treatment? What am I missing? 
Did the ankle? Is there a bad medical? What am I missing here? Help me. Has George and I their media? I mean, they're a pro day yet, he, Kenny? They did. He skipped it because of oh. still dealing with the injury. And there it there is. There we right. go. Get a little something. He'll have a, uh, a, a, throw, he'll have a day in April. But I don't have a problem with the Jets taking him because I think Bowers could still be one of the five best players in the draft. So let me just get to it, okay? We'll work backwards from there if you want to, but I want to give you plenty of time to discuss what the Lions do here at 29. They take wide receiver out of South Carolina, Xavier Legion. He's a stud. He's a do-everything stud for them. When he when he plays and he's healthy, he's like Debo Samuel. He's that kind of comp, not just because Debo went to South Carolina, but he plays that role. He's a really good football player that very few people watch. I am not going to knock it. I'm not. I, I could see a pathway to doing it. No, no, no. But here's the thing. What's the thing? Don't you already have that guy on the team? And what is that saying about the guy who's on the team already? Because it kind of goes back to what I said earlier in the show, where you could draft depth, and once you're, you realize, I'm not going to pay this guy, I'm going to replace this guy. Isn't that what St. Brown does for this team? No. It's, okay. Debo and Ayuk and Kittle. They well, all I mean, work in harmony. Right, but I'm saying St. Brown is, to me, is the, kind of that Debo type of guy for the Lions. Where you can run them, you can put them in the slot. You can put them all over. You can hand the ball off to them. You can give them the jet sweeps. Okay. What's better than that? I'll take two of them. Okay. I, I'm just telling you, you can't depend on J-Mo yet. Josh Reynolds is on the last year, a one year, that they just re-signed him, right? You talked about having the ability to have some depth, right? Isn't that what this is? It is. I thought maybe if you went after a big receiver. Okay. Yeah, because he's listed at 6'3", but at the combine, he's 6'1". Oh, that always happens. Yeah, Antoine exactly. Randall was listed at 5'10". How did right. that go? Guy was four feet tall. So as expected, let me go back. The first cornerback taken off the board is at 15, Quinion Mitchell. I think it's he's becoming the consensus best corner in this draft. Um, and then we have at 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers take Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. Nate Wiggins' cornerback goes 22 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. That makes sense. And let me, let me, can I just add one more thing? Sure. Just because I was thinking about this. Like, we talk about it. The Lions don't have a contested catch guy. They also don't have a physical. Now, look, I love Amon Ram and pay him every bit of $25, $27 million. It's not a shot, but he's not physically imposing, right? If you draft Legit, you're getting that piece to the offense. Like, that is the one missing piece. Now, I love that they move Laporta out in the red zone, but when we're talking about it, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm trying to replace anybody. I'm saying complementary abilities. Like, no. if I drafted Xavier Worthy, that's redundant. I have Jamar. They don't have anybody like that, Cat. Then you give Ben Johnson a toy where all of a sudden now... Now, this guy can carry the rock here or there. That downhill physical. I, I'm I'm not telling you it's the leader in the clubhouse for me, but, man, if they did it, I wouldn't rip it. Well, see, I, be, I just thought that, that was St. Brown because I remember, like, in the Niner game on that third down play, and they hand, When, when they he put, didn't get it? They put him in the backfield. Right, and he didn't get it. You're 6'3", okay, you know 220, you might get it. Mistakes were made. <laughs> yeah, and at that point, like we talked about before, Sorry, it's dude. best player available. So. Right, and if you have a profile that that guy fits what you do and it's a premium, maybe that puts you over the top. Yeah. Maybe he's the guy who gets that carry on the third and two. Correct. Maybe you're throwing the ball to him and it's a contested grab, and instead of dropping it like Josh Reynolds, he gets it. But I'm a nerd. I watch him. I can't help it. I'm very impressed. I'm a loser. You had, a ticket. you had a fever. And the only <laughs> recipe was milk hype. Exactly. <laughs> and that is. Where it, did they even get that when they used that on their show? I think they probably just had the guy record him. Will that guy record whatever we tell him to record? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Let me get writing. <laughs>